thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plant Problems. Again, I've got my guest, Flavio Hungaro, and we are continuing our eight-part series. This is actually going to be episode number seven. And today we're going to be covering personal finances along with business plans. Now, you know, I, I talk a lot about this in, in the book that I wrote, From Black Market to the Man, 10 Steps to Becoming a Multimillionaire in the Legal Cannabis Industry. And coming back from my now 15 years of experience in cannabis, these are simple things that I think a lot of us don't really think about. Uh, personal finance is a huge one, and it took me a long time to figure this out. And so, Flavia, I, I appreciate you taking the time. She actually did some homework from our last episode, and she was going to go through and just kind of break it down. You know, the simplest way to go about this, and, and I'll explain why I'm doing this here in a minute, but the simplest way to go about this is what does it cost for me to live? You know, I, at the end of the day, you have to eat, you have to have a roof over your head. Uh, if you have uh, a family, you've got kids to take care of, husbands and wives to make sure that they're taken care of. And so there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes as you're building your thriving cannabis company. Flavia, I'd, I'd like to start with you. And uh, first of all, just ask you, when I asked you, well, personal finances, were you thinking, what were you thinking to yourself when I asked you that question? Could you do this for me? So not just, I was thinking about, you know, my monthly routine, uh, everything that entails that uh, from, you know, grocery shopping and, uh, you know, taking care of the kids in so many ways and, you know, you know, plus personal bills. Um, and on top of that, you know, to make sure that I can afford continue with my projects, I have to think about expenses I have with the business itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I try to combine everything and um, things have changed, you know, for from a um, couple months ago to now. Uh, I wasn't, my, my expenses were not so high, but because I've been taking on new projects, and uh, so that that changes um, a little bit of, you know, everything that I have to uh, account for. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you're, it sounds like you're taking on uh, a little bit more, a little bit more stress along with it. And I mean, you want to make the right decisions. And so, you know, the, the, the reason why I had you do this little exercise is really understanding where you guys are at and your family's at. Um, as you move forward, because, you know, if it changes a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there, your, your budget, it's understandable. Like, okay, well, I got to come up with an extra hundred here. But when you start adding thousands, mm -hmm. that, that can really add up quick. And all, all, all of a sudden you're, you're going into debt. Right. And it does happen. It's happened to me too. Um, but so what I want to ask you, um, how, so how much time did you put into, trying to figure out what your monthly bills are. Did you, did it take you very long? Uh, it did not take very long because every month I have to come up with the money. So <laughs> I have, have an idea how much I need. Uh -huh. um, it takes more time to actually figure out how I'm going to come up with the money <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, um, I had some money back home and my dad had to send me. Uh, and he also helped me with, you know, his own finances and, and, and that, you know, carry me through a little bit longer. Um, also my partner, um, who is my mother-in-law, she's being, um, you know, the main person helping us out. And, you know, besides that, I had some savings from uh, my previous job. So, but you know, that doesn't last that long, especially now that we are coming up with more projects. And sometimes I feel like, am I taking too many projects at the same, you know, all at the same time? And, I feel like I am, but 
on the other hand, I also thought that, you know, I had a, a timeline in mind mm -hmm. and thinking that, you know, I'm going to have the, the star open at least one of them by a certain date. So I think we can do this until the end of the year and it will be okay. And then after that, hopefully with the store open, then I'll be able to, you know, make things a little bit easier. So right now, from now until I'll say January, it's going to be like very, very um, hard on us. But I'm hoping that um, by January, things are going to look a little better. <laughs> yeah. And if not, the only thing that I can do is to drop, you know, a project or so and to make things, you know, still um, make, you know, the, the most concrete, you know, projects. I think that that, that would be the, the idea. But um, and besides, you know, I, I've been reaching out like to friends and, you know, other family members to see if um, I can get the financial help. Mm -hmm. And for example, tomorrow I'm meeting up with another person that might be able to help. So hopefully that's going to be, you know, a, a, a plus. <laughs> good, good. Um, so, so right now, just so I can get a picture, what, what are your, what's the co what do you have to cover every month? So right now it's about 30,000. Okay. But that started like last month. That's, that's, that, that's not I, just your personal bills though too, right? No, this is including the business. <laughs> okay. What, what are your personal bills? My personal bills would be about like 5,000. 5,000. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's reasonable. Yeah. Um, okay. So good. And then you've got, so 25,000, that's what's starting yeah. to happen with the business. Yeah. Okay. 5,000 is relatively, so, so over the last year and 18 months, that bill has been pretty consistent, hasn't changed. Right? Pretty consistent. And, and to be honest with you, I was, when, you know, as I said, dealing with landlords and, and making um, commitments, I was very fortunate to find um, people to work with me where, for example, um, one location, I only had to pay, let's say $3,000 for the whole year. And then after that, I, I did have to give uh, um, a deposit, a substantial deposit, so the construction could start. Uh, but if you think about it, what's $3,000 for the first year? It's nothing, right? And then for the other project uh, in Berkeley, for example, the property owner is really helping me uh, so much that he's allowing me to stop paying the monthly uh, rent after I open the business. The only thing that he asked for, you know, for me to get to this point is to make sure that I, he wanted to see my business plan mm -hmm. and he wanted to see a traffic study done. Because okay. he also has a, um, a business in the same plaza, um, which is a Dunkin' Donuts. So he wanted to make sure that my business plan wouldn't interfere with his business plan. Okay, and, that's smart. You know, it's more than fair. And, you know, yeah. traffic study, if you do a full traffic study, it is expensive, but it was necessary. So I can't, I can't you know, blame him for asking me for that. And, and it's actually a good thing that he did because that was able to carry me through the process with the, with the town. And now I'll be able to uh, start construction. So. Well, and I'd also like to point out, it gives you a better idea of – basically the traffic that's going to be going by your store every day. So you can kind of build uh, your projections a little bit more accurately, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So that's a great thing. Okay. So up until this point, how have you been paying your personal bills? So like I said, I had money saved back home that my okay. dad sent to me. And also he, from his own money, he, he helped me out with that. Uh, my mother-in-law has been helping us with that and okay. uh, as well. And I had savings from my job uh, that I had, you know, from, I worked as a waitress for over 10 years and I was very, um, how can I say, money savvy. So I kept, you know, I saved a lot of money Good. and that was, you know, what helped me um, get to this point as well. Well, I'll, I will uh, let you know, I wasn't money savvy until I had to go through the process. Um, and so it required me, I, I worked basically a second job until I could pay myself through the store. Um, I worked at a local hydroponics store. I, I did construction for a long time, and then I worked at a local hydroponics store um, that got me, even when we opened the store, 
I was working there for almost a year until I was able to break away. Um, and I think as new entrepreneurs listen to this, I, I want them to really understand that, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can take um, to make sure that you cover your stuff. You know, I was at the point where I had had bills um, uh, because of different situations. I had some pretty high bills. And so I had to make some tough decisions on what I was going to pay and what I wasn't going to pay. Um, and so I really sat down and this is what forced me to do the personal finance stuff and really go through it and say, okay, what is necessary and what is not? Unfortunately, a lot of my credit card debt was not necessary. Um, you know, I had had a, a home that I was doing growing my caregivership. Uh, unfortunately, I was I had to stop paying the bills on that, which became something that just kind of lingered over my head. But I had to do what I had to do to get to the point, to the growth. And, you know, some of you new guys out there, it's going to be painful. I mean, I'm sure you've already done, you've felt some pain over the yeah. last year and anxiety on, on how to keep things going while you make sure you get your locations open or at least a plan in place, right? Right. Especially right now. Now it is the toughest time for, for me and my family because we are so close to opening a store. And at the same time, we're like really struggling to get everything together so we can, you know, make those monthly payments at least for the next few months and be able to open one store. And I, and you know, I, we had a little bit of, um, um, things that happened this week, actually, with, we're probably going to go over that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll go over that. I'm ahead of myself right now, but. So 5,000 is relatively, um, you know, that's, I would say it's doable. You're not too far out there. I think um, you always want to try to have a plan B if possible. Like if I have to drag this a couple more months. Right. Is there something of uh, an asset that you can part with, right? Is there something just to get you over that finish line? And, you know, I see people get to that point and they're so, they're so close. I mean, they're yeah. this close. And if they would have just sold this vehicle or done this or, you know, done anything to, to figure out how to make a quick buck, because I know you hustle, mm -hmm. but just something just to get you past that extra couple 30 to 60 days. That's yeah. all the difference you need sometimes to be successful. Right. And, you know, our society, unfortunately, doesn't really share that. At least I haven't noticed that. They don't share that this is what it takes to, to you know, become, if success is money to you, if it's to becoming a millionaire, these are the points where you have to sit down with your family or your husband and make these tough decisions sometimes. And I, you know, I want to let you know, and the listeners know that this is normal um, to becoming successful. If, if you sit back and look at all those people around you that say they're going to be successful and they're going to do this, that's the point when you see, uh, they, they say when the rubber hits the road, when people step up, right. Yeah. And, 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 and it changes you. It, it fundamentally changes you because what happens is once you are able to beat that little point, then all of a sudden the next, the next little hurdle is going to come up or the big hurdle is going to come up and you're going to be like, I know I can do this. So right. it's that confidence in yourself personally that sometimes we feel that anxiety that builds on you and you're like, you know what, this is, this uncomfortableness is getting me where I need to be. Right. So, so, so I want you to, thrive on that when you feel that that means you're doing the right thing right. <laughs> yeah, no, especially because uh, for example so i've never like asked to borrow money from friends you know mm -hmm. I, I didn't have the need to do that ever you know i'm very grateful for that um but it gets to a point that you see that you have no other option but in my situation for example because i have this business going and I have, you know, people that I, you know, met when I first moved to the U.S. And we're still friends until today. And they, you know, it's not like they're just lending me money. They, they know me. They know my character as well. So that makes a difference. And on top of that, they, I've been sharing with, you know, my friends my progress. 
so they see that it's not okay i'm gonna lend you money but you know i'll never see this money you know back mm -hmm. they, they see what i'm going through and they see that you know i'm almost there so that also gives them some um credibility to believe in what i'm doing and they see that you know it's not like I am in the beginning of the process either. I'm about to open a store. So that also makes, you know, things different because you, once you're looking for money and you're looking for investors or just like hard money loan, the interest rates are incredibly high. Yes. And, and many times I thought, oh, we, you know, I think we found the right person to lend us the money. And we keep thinking about like all the options that they are offering us. And are they really trying to, you know, I wouldn't say help because they're making money out of it too, but are they really going to be the person who's going to help you get to the point B or you, if you stop and thinking about the actual terms that they are offering, are they trying to get you believing that they are doing that and then hoping that you're not going to make to that point and then they're going to take everything that you just accomplished. Yeah. From. And, <laughs> and, and unfortunately a lot of people learn that the hard way because they don't, they don't know any different. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds like to me that you, you at least have some, some good people to bounce these, uh, these contracts and these deals off because that's really what it takes mm -hmm. is going, uh, cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys out there that will lend to own. So basically they'll lend you all this money, but in the end they're going to own your business because they, they, they give you too long of a runway and you can't make the payments and all of a sudden you lose your company. Right. And they, they call it loan to own is what it is. Um, and it's a, it's a sneaky little tactic, but it is business. You know, I, 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 I want, I want you to know that um, this is a part of business. It, you may not like it. I, I may not like it. However, it doesn't mean that um, it can't affect you or, or hurt your business. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of those things like that is, is huge. So I'm glad you have a sense of you now where you're like, I know this is possible and I, can, I know I can lose this. The flip side of that is when you, when you started talking about paying high interest. In this business right now, because we don't have banking, it, it's, it's, it happens to us. Uh, I mean, I've been in companies where uh, we've borrowed a million dollars and we had to pay, pay back 25% in a year. That's a significant amount of money. Um, but when we weighed the options of not having that money to stunt our growth, right? you can't look at this like a home loan. Right. It's not, well, I didn't get the best interest rate ever. Where is that going to, where is that going to put my company in the next 12 months if I make this happen? Mm -hmm. And it's significant. Uh, so much so that, hey, well, maybe that first million cost me 250, but now I've got, I've got, you know, a million of my own dollars that I don't have to borrow anymore. Sometimes you have to make those decisions and, and a lot of those people. That speeds up the process. It does. And, and now I realize yeah. this. I wish I had, you know, a bad understanding maybe a year ago. <laughs> but, you know. It, it's all a part of the process. I mean, you're I'm learning it. Yeah. yeah. And so hopefully, you know, us just discussing this, people will be able to, oh, that makes sense. I, when, when I'm out there looking, I want to make, be aware of these things, right? Because it is a big mistake. I mean, we talked a, a couple episodes back about how you – had a, uh, you'd, you'd probably, you regret a lease, a lease that you uh, signed on, on a commercial property because it was not really favorable to you in the end. But these are mistakes that we make. Um, it hasn't stopped you from growing. So that's good. So, okay. So talking about personal finance, sounds like you've got a good idea um, of how you're going to cover it and when you're going to cover it. So that's good. Um, you know, keeping those in mind all the time is huge. Uh, and then you've got your business expenses, which you're going to start building, which it's good that you have a partner. A lot of times we take on a financial partner in these situations. Um, your partner is getting your knowledge and your drive of going out there to put these deals together is what it sounds like a lot of what you're doing. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
Good, good. So do you have any questions for me um, with regard to personal finance since we've gone through all this? Uh, for personal finances, I mean, it, it really depends on, on each person's um, experience. I mean, what, how can I put this? Um, goals yeah. and also being like how realistic you can be. And, and that's where, you know, you gotta know how to draw like the line <laughs> and that's where we are right now. But, and, and uh, on the other hand, it's, you see the opportunities and I, I know that I have maybe more things on my plate than maybe somebody else would have in my shoes. But I also see that not everything that I have planned right now is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably being like over realistic and, and going with more projects that I should have been right now. So from your perspective, like how, or even like how your experience when you first started, did you decide to do the same thing? Like go on the same route, like have more projects in your hand because you didn't know what was going to happen or, or were you more, um, uh, cautious, if I can say that way. Well, so, so with us, we had, we had a bit of a different dynamic because we had four of us, right? Mm -hmm. And we were all working in the business. So we had two partners in the dispensary and we had two partners in the grow. And I was, I was one of the partners in the grow. And we, you know, it was, everybody kind of had their own, own opinion, right? on these different opportunities that we wanted to take and everybody was a little bit more um you know we we all took different risks in different areas right which i think was a lot of our success because we couldn't not one person could get us too far in a bad direction without the other partner pulling back right right mm -hmm. so that was very helpful what i think we came to the understanding is if we can get our grow, because that's what we first started with, because uh, the way our situation was, is we went to wholesale and we partnered up with some other people that actually lost their grow. And so we were going to do a wholesale grow, all four of us together. But when the regulations came out for medical in 2010, it required us to sell the majority of our product through our store. So we couldn't just do a wholesale model. So then we had to adapt and say, okay, well, what do we do? So at that point, it was, all right, let's figure out, we've got to figure out, find a store. So we found a location, and then we, we had to get our grow up and running to a point where we could produce enough product to pay all the bills, right? Mm -hmm. And being that it grows very expensive, um, what we had in our past discussion, I said, I probably would have stayed away from that in the beginning, but I didn't start out that way. So it was different. So this all depends on your situation. What we were happy with at the time was let's get a thriving grow going and just get our store doors open. So at that point, then we can reassess because we have a system flowing. We've got money coming in and then we can go to the next op opportunity. So we actually took on another store, um, kind of by accident about a year later. Uh, we were concerned that our grow, we weren't gonna be, since nobody had done this before, we, we were concerned that we weren't going to be able to grow enough pro or to sell enough product that we grew. We thought we would say, oh man, we're, we're not gonna be able to sell it all through one store. So what we did is we partnered up with another dispensary that was downtown Denver. And we negotiated, say, hey, how about we negotiate a price with you? You're buying so many pounds per month. And then that, that was something we didn't have to worry about making sure it happened through our store. So we were moving a few parts like that. However, we weren't taking large investments to open another store, right? Because I was looking at some of the numbers on your business plan. You're looking at uh, one of them's opening one would, is going to cost around close to half a million. You've got one. And then the other store, Berkeley, I think, if I'm correct in saying it was closer to like 700. Is that correct? Yeah, that was 
the original business plan, but things, things change. Changing, things change. And, uh, yeah. And, and that's another thing I want to say is that they're going to. Mm -hmm. Business plan is, it's relatively kind of points you in the right direction. Right. But sometimes you kind of end over here. <laughs> no, and, and then, and, and so the, the, for example, for Berkeley, the business plan I created last summer, that's what I had to present to the owner. And since then I've, you know, like I said to you for, for Taunton, I've met those contractors that are willing to help me out. So, you know, I'm hoping that that's still going to work out for Berkeley and, um, and that's going to reduce my costs a lot. And besides that, I was just, just looking at, um, somebody on, on LinkedIn and they have, uh, pictures that they posted from recent projects that they just finished. And the looks it's it's so basic yeah that i'm like it can't be so expensive but on the other hand i was talking to a different person who was um offering to work with me on the cultivation project and when i told this person my numbers for my retails even the the 500 700 dollars uh, 700 thousand dollars he thinks it's not enough money yeah so he said, you know, it should be close to a million. And I'm like, I don't think so, <laughs> you know? So I don't know if I, if I am um, doing something wrong or if the prices were very high before, but now the more companies are starting to do more co this type of construction, the numbers are going down because there's a lot of more competition out there for these companies as well. So this is another thing that I'm, I just got into this week and I'm like, am I, doing like a, a, a show, like a, a less expensive projection right now. And am I doing a bad job right now thinking that I'm going to be able to afford and I'm, you know, my quotes are not perfect or, you know, close to perfect. What I, what I would suggest you do is so you don't know, so you make sure you're not overextending yourself in one project or another is go over a monthly basis on, okay, where are we at? The, the main, the basic reason why I want, or the main reason why I wanted you to go through these processes is to kind of start getting in that mindset because we want to start getting to a point where you're thinking six to 12 months down the road at the very least, because what can happen that we are, that's very unexpected. And I've seen it hit numbers of numbers of business owners as they go forward is dealing with the city and dealing with the fire department. What can very easily happen is, since they're trying to figure this all out at the same time, those can push your deadlines back. Mm -hmm. It can be months, right? And so if you were thinking, well, geez, I was hoping to be open in January, and this is just an example. If I was open to be January, and all of a sudden, COVID has slowed everything down because or th there's COVID going through the office of all the, all the um, the building inspectors and they've got one guy. Right. And so that's something that you have no control over. The city's like, well, we can't really hire any, we can hire somebody, but we can't hire them fast enough. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're set at the, you're at the mercy of this, getting your certificate of occupancy for your place. And you're just burning cash. You're burning $25,000 a month. Right. And if you don't expect that stuff, in advance, pretty soon you're four months down the road and you're like, man, I've got $100,000 that I've got and I'm not ready for that. Right. And so what, 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 what can happen is now if you've got two stores you're in that scenario with, that's going to put you out of business before you Definitely, even open. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this. So mm -hmm. you have to assess these projects. You know, you have to be diligent on, I've got to sit down and make sure I go through these numbers this month. So that I can see, you know, my, my six month is going to happen because what that's going to do is here's my goal. I'm shooting for it. I may not hit it, but what do I do in between? And that's really the key to this is, and, and, and of course, um, having very, having very clear communication with your um, business owner that has the funding so that they are on, on the same page because mm -hmm they can get to a point where they're just like, I've had it. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. And then you're really screwed. 
Um, it's not, not that, it, not that you're over with, but as, as, uh, your partner and slash mother-in-law sees you going through these motions, she knows how serious you're taking this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she's in business because of that already. However, it builds that stability between your business partner relationship. Because as you grow and get bigger, these, these things will be magnified. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to go too far into the business plan side, but that, or into the business partner side, but that, that's, that's that progression that starts happening. And if you know that in advance, you can plan for it. Right. You know? So, so I think what you're doing is um, you're doing the right thing, but you just have to make sure you're diligent about um, keeping track of on a monthly basis on where you're at so that if you do need to pull off, let's say the Berkeley project and focus. Oh, yeah, no, I, I was last time we spoke, I had, you know, doubts which one if I should go with both at the same time if I should just go with one but things happened this week that changed not from my, I mean it wasn't on my end it was actually on the city um had, you know they actually canceled my 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 meeting not just mine but like every else everybody else's meetings okay that were scheduled for uh this week and because one of the companies um it's suing and it's it's <laughs> it's another um interesting it's, a, it's another it's another it's another hurdle that you have to jump right now so yeah so because of that they the court issue a injunction that stopped and i don't really understand uh, i'm trying to learn more about everything that's going on right now because they just stopped everybody's licensing um, meetings, which I don't understand why they would have to do that if there's a company suing and, you know, if they are considering giving that company a license, why don't they hold one license? Why do they have to stop everybody's progress? And that's well, another point. We are part of the social equity program, so the state give us the advantage of having expedited review so because they know that we don't have much money and so we can you know start our business and things like this happen and i've had my provisional license since may and you know i've had all the documents you know ready for them and right now i have to wait and that puts me in a disadvantage because everybody who was behind me they are catching up and we are all going to be at the same level so the the opportunity that i would have to be you know most likely one if not the first one one of the first ones to open it on maybe everybody's going to be able to open at the same time which makes a big difference but because of that um and you know it just happened a couple of days ago so we're still trying to learn more about what's actually uh, going on so we have made a decision that we most likely are going to start with Berkeley. Okay. Which is not that far. So we're probably going to get the same, you know, if not more uh, people to come to our store because the other ones in town, they're not going to be open right now. That's how I see it. I could be wrong. Maybe they would change next week and say, you know what, we're going to let you go ahead with your meeting. But, and, and what a, we i'm thinking about doing this um we're actually going to have a meeting with the with the um architect as well and I, I have actually another person going tomorrow to give me a different quote for berkeley and i want to see if i can get um different plans to make that project cheaper mm -hmm. because that way i'll be able to do one store cheaper and then maybe when when it's time to go back to taunton then i'll have cash flow and then i can make like a really nice store you're i don't want to make like a bad you know a bad looking store that's yeah. not my point but i just want to make sure that we can afford especially because now things are getting you know tight yeah mm -hmm. so i think that's going to be our our goal i i think um you sound a little different from when we discussed we talked last time <laughs> I, I think, I think you're, you're at least from what I'm gathering is you're focusing in on what really counts. And like, if I can open one store, you seem like, okay, that will get me to the opportunity to open the second one. And now I have to, I have to maneuver around 
the city and they're hearing stuff. So it, it's nice to hear you say that because I think, uh, you know, as you've worked through this, this is, this is how you can become successful. I mean, you're thinking, how do I build it cheaper? How do I get in that? And I can put more money in when I have more cash, but I don't have to, you know, I, I heard this one the other day and it, you can take it, you can take it however you want, but you don't have to shoot your entire cash amount at one deal. And all of a sudden, ex- because a lot of people will do that just expecting that they're going to win. Right. 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 And you can always go back through and do a remodel. And I think. And you um, said that too last time. So that, that stuck in my mind. And I'm like, you know what? And I saw this picture right before our meeting. And I'm, I'm thinking, this might be just what we need right now. Let's make it very, very basic. And, and the other thing with COVID, we don't even know who's going to be even be able to be inside the store. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Parkside pickup. And just have like friends and family working in the store and try to work out a deal. Say, can I pay you later? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah, just I mean, you, you're. This is uh, exactly how you squeeze every little penny out. You know, you get f- friends and family that are like, "Hey, guys, I need everything to get this open. Will you guys help work work with me? And you know, I'll pay you after the first week after we get some money coming in. Stuff like that is." you know, that's, that's hustling. You're hustling now. And that's, right. it, it's getting me excited because I can see it happening. I can see you going to your friend and they're like, Oh, I'd love to be a part of opening a store. Who gets to do that? Right. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, I, I, I talked to my friends when I was opening a store and they're like seeing all the stuff all over the news and, you know, cause it really, they really glamorize cannabis and all the cash and everything. So who, who, who wouldn't want to be a part of the making history? I mean, it's right. a big deal, right? right? So, well, I think, I think you're going, I think your mind's getting in the right spot. It sounds like uh, you're, you're taking in your, you're segmenting different decisions in the right way. So, you know, I, it, it's exciting to see. I, I, I really like where you're heading. And, you know, I was upset at first when I heard about that the meeting got canceled and then I'm thinking, hold on, this just makes my decision making easier. I feel like, you know, bingo. That's yep. How I see it. <laughs> bingo. Well, um, I'd like to talk. So I went through both your business plans on Taunton and Berkeley. And one thing that I, and, and maybe you haven't showed me this information uh, yet is this is all good stuff. So, this is all great stuff. You've got, you know, your executive team that you have in place, which is you and your business partners. And then you've got some advisories that are in there. Um, and then description of facility. I mean, you get really, you get really detailed in, in how this is set up, which is good. And it's good for you to follow, but it, you know, what this really helps is for the city, right? This is really a city. Yeah, because for example, f- uh, for me, it's like, well, for me, it's new. I mean, right now it's not new anymore, but when I first started writing these business plans, I was trying to see um, what, you know, what do people write on their business plans for cannabis, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's it, it becomes um, most likely the same thing in every business plan because, you know, everybody's going to sell you know, the same type of product, of course, the quality could be different. And that's what could actually differentiate you from, um, from your competition, right? Having a better quality uh, product, but on paper, nobody knows the, the, the difference, you know, and yeah. the politicians, they don't really understand. Maybe they do, maybe they don't understand. They just know, they want to know what type of products you have, hours of opening, hours of closing, um, some people might ask, you know, how many people do you expect to have and, and you know, how much revenue you're expecting. So it's like, I, I didn't go, I didn't pay anybody to create my business plan, which I could have done, but I didn't have the money for that. And even like recently, I've been talking to different people um, about, you know, raising funds and I've got like some really, really high calls for 
business plan that I might have to actually do it. I just don't, might not have the money right now, but it might be important for me if I want to raise a certain amount of money, for example, for my cultivation project, which, you know, it is a, a much bigger project. So that's something that I have to consider, but I don't have the money right now. So I really have to figure out like what my options are for that. Do but you, for, you know, whatever I presented to you, it's, it's a very basic, I feel like business plan. It, it's, it's totally fine. It's, it's good for the city for them to know. It also helps you line out, you know, you've got stuff in here like security layout and how you're going to uh, somewhat approach that. And you're going to figure out all these little things as you move along. You know, one thing I, I want to move forward, but one thing I want to ask you about is you've got a, a part, you're, you've got a relationship you've built with a bank, right? Yes. Um, okay. There's a, a bank that I've been working with and there's not many banks that deal with cannabis um, in Massachusetts, but I, as I understand, it's a lot more than any other places. Like, for example, maybe when you first started, probably there were no banks out there doing any. Yeah, unfortunately, we had to make up names and go in as concession groups, and which is, it's a form of, of money laundering because you're using a different entity to put money through. But we didn't have any choices until uh, the banks started understanding that they could regulate. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is, do you have more than one relationship with banks? No, I do not. Okay. I only have one, but I've been approached by different other uh, banks that um, are trying to get into the game. And I just haven't felt the need yet to pursue another banking um, option. But um, it's something that I, I mean, that I could, you know, think that might be important to do just so you're not just with, you know, stuck with one thing in front of you. Yeah. What can happen is banks can, they, they can, accept you as you are at the beginning and if you start being successful which which i think you're going to to be down this road the bigger the deposits get the more nervous they get hmm. and okay. so you know what what i what i learned is you know make sure i had some other people on the side that i was keeping relations up with because if i had to if they shut my account down i got to move it somewhere else I see. Yeah. and if you're not ready um for example in 2012 we went through uh, a bank a month for oh, some there was a couple times when we went through two banks a month where they were shutting our account down constantly and what happens is it forces you into some uh, some tough situations because now all of a sudden you have payroll. How the hell am I going to pay payroll? Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you, so what's helpful is if you get a, a couple banks that you know, well, uh, second thing is if I have no bank, how am I going to pay my bills? So building a, just a little basic plan of, all right, how am I going to take payroll tax for my employees uh, I mean, I know you have some uh, some bookkeeping background, so you can start working on this stuff ahead of time. Right. Because what's going to happen is that's your, kind of your fail safe. You get your plan B and sometimes plan C. Usually in cannabis, it's C and D. It goes all the way down there. <laughs> so so you want to have these in mind and put a couple, uh, put a little bit of thought into those because they will save you a huge amount of stress because when it comes to, well, what am I supposed to do? My mortgage is due or my lease is due. I've got rent on, I've got, um, I've got rent in this other property and I have to pay payroll tax and I've got payroll. So what am I going to do at that point? So we actually had points where there was almost a year we were paying everything in cash, but that came as a scramble. Like how do we do this? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's a lot easier not to go through that if, you, if you're, for one, ready. And secondly, if you've got uh, a, some other banking relationships that understand what you're doing. Right. So, and then nowadays they also have those cash apps. They have, um, I mean, um, can pay, actually. Can pay, right? Can pay. Yeah, and there's other things that, you know, you have yeah. to pay a higher fee. But those are things that I'm considering um, adopting as well, because I think not many people um, have the cash in hand, so they might 
they rather pay an extra fee and use their credit card, debit card. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, th I think those are, um, and so it sounds like you're thinking about it. So just keep going, keep going in that direction as you, right. as you grow. Um, okay. So you asked me a question about the business plan. Um, I think this is really important. So I, I'm going to continue this episode a little further because you've got people that are coming to you saying, Hey, we want you to, we think you should spend $40,000 with us and build this business plan, right? Yes, because the idea is if I decide to go uh, and look for funding for my cultivation project, um, that requires a, a larger amount than just, you know, for the retail. So in that case, you, when, when you, and something that I wasn't even aware of before um, until I learned this is that, so when, when you start looking for, when you start doing like r raising this type of money, you have to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to make sure they have a, a real sharp business plan so you can, you know, capture the right interest from the, the person who is lending the money. So that's one thing. And, you know, the business plans that I have, it might have, um, might not be, you know, so specific, so detailed that would capture that, the right investor. Number two, um, as I understand, there are several, um, you have to be compliant with, I think it's PPP or something like, I, I forgot the name now, but there's a, a certain things that you gotta be compliant. So for example, some people might lend you the money and then when you see you end up losing your whole business because they see that you sign a contract that it's not even valid because you know they lend you the money and then you can't pay them back so they just take you know your whole business so that's that's what i um i understood mm -hmm. so and 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 besides that you know it's it's such a higher value project that you the, the person who is the intermediary they need to make sure that both sides are um you know, following everything that they are supposed to follow. Yeah, there's a lot of regulations when it comes to borrowing money, and those are ever changing um, on a local level, uh, you know, and so things will be happening that are allowed this week and next week they're not because some regulations changed. And so that takes, uh, you know, having those, those attorneys you can turn to on the local level that can keep up with that. This kind of takes us back to, the uh when i when i was talking to you about uh different association groups that can help out with a lot of this did you happen to have a chance to um research any of those or talk to any of those groups uh since we last discussed that yeah so there was a group that i i've heard about them before um i had i, I initiated a conversation um However, uh, they do require a certain amount of money that you got to pay per month. Okay. Per and because, you know, my situation right now is not that easy. So I decided not to pursue. And they actually offered, um, because I'm social equity, to help me for the first three months um, for free. Okay. And then after that, then I would have to stop. Um, making payments um, and hoping that I'll be able to have my store open and then I'll be able to continue with that. So what I'm going to do, I, I haven't done that yet, but I will reach out to them um, and um, I'm going to join that. But I, I couldn't, I, I, I know this one that I've spoken with before, but I couldn't find many others. I found like for cultivation, but it, I don't know exactly where to, to find this, um, this groups. Okay. Well, let me see if I can help the, you out. The one that you mentioned, the N N I C A. N C I A. And N C I A. Um, I know that they hosted a, something in Massachusetts, um, maybe in the beginning of the year, uh -huh. something like that, but I wasn't even aware at that time that, so, you know. So I will, so do me a favor and, Try to reach out to them first and ask them who they have locally there because I, I guarantee they know some. 
Um, but if you can't find one through them, let me know. Because I think a lot of what you're dealing with right now, I think there, you could find the answers in some of these groups. On that first group that you, t that you were just talking about, what are they charging per month? What's their fee? For the listeners out there, you know, that, like I mentioned a while ago, it can be anywhere from, you know, a few hundred bucks a month to several thousands, depending on. I think on. it was like a thousand. If I'm not I can't find the email right now, but I think it was like a thousand dollars. Okay. And, and that is. That's significant. So it, it is. I, I was, we were a part, <laughs> we were a part of the early, early time and we had to make some tough decisions because there were very few groups and that's probably what part of this is. And so they're smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to actually get people to help you and people that are in the political system, lobbyists and stuff, it takes a significant amount of money. And if you only have 10 or 20 people, it's like, okay, a few thousand here, a few thousand there to these representatives is it's just gone like that. So uh, a lot of them aren't making any money. Um, they're just trying to get to that next step. So I understand it, it's not possible for you right now. Were they able to let you sit in on a meeting of any kind? Like they probably do a weekly meeting or monthly meeting. How does it work? The one I, that I, I spoke with, I think they do once every two weeks or okay. maybe once a month. Okay. And the busier they get, the more often they should be doing it because regulations are going to be changing a lot. So when you do feel comfortable in picking a group, what, what I can see happening is it's going to help you answer a lot of the questions that you and I have been talking about, especially with this business plan, because you're going to be seeing different entrepreneurs operating their companies and you'll be like, Oh, I didn't even think about that. And so when you talk about these guys that are approaching you about spending $40,000 on a business plan. For one, I think it's too much. Um, and secondly, I think it's too early. Uh, you don't even have a store open yet. Um, you're not really sure how that's going to fill out. And the third thing is, you know, was, what does Flavia see the overall picture of what her business looks like in the next five years? Um, I think spending the time on that is more valuable for you right now as opposed to bringing somebody in that's going to tell you you need to do this and you need to do that. We built a, we built a multi-million dollar company without a $40,000 business plan. It, it's possible. What, what, what happens is... How did you raise the money? <laughs> that's the, the key. Because th that's what you're saying. Like You need this type of business plan that costs this much so I can help you raise, for example, for this small cultivation facility, um, they said I, I, they could help me raise up to $10 million. The sales pitch sounds awesome. Right. <laughs> that's, that's what's hard. And I've, I've fallen for ones like that too. However, as you move forward and you grow your company, you see different avenues where it's like, what happens with people and you borrow $10 million, they want a significant amount of your business. They, and they want a certain amount of control. Mm -hmm. And unless you've, unless you've had some experience in this industry for a while, you're not going to know what's coming at you because they're going to have more expensive lawyers. They're going to have people that have been in business longer that have the experience on how to, you know, basically screw you out of certain parts of the contract. And even the lawyers you bring, are not going to see some of the stuff that they have coming. And that's the challenging part. So when you get into selling off parts of your company, that's when I go back to, I think it's too early for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have the experience to deal with those people like that. If you had somebody on your side that say, uh, you know, was your business partner and has raised hundreds of millions of dollars, at least you could trust that person and say, you know what, what's good for him is also good for me because we're partners, right? As long as you have that trust there. But right now where you're at, they, there's blood in the water. They see that there's a lot of people that are not, and I'm not saying you're not business savvy, but not to the level that they're used to dealing with, right? And these right. money guys are smart. There's a lot of sharks out there. 
uh, I've encountered several. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> I, I think you're too early to go that route. I really do. Uh, I think you've got some amazing stuff working for you right now that's in front of you. I think all that you're missing on this business plan is where does Flavia see, you know, simple as that is like Flavia sees that she wants a store. She wants to open a new store every year and for the next five years. That might be, that might not be your goal. Maybe it's two stores and you want to be doing $500,000 a year in revenue or $500,000 a month in revenue so that you're doing $12 million in sales. Maybe that's your goal. But, mm -hmm. but, but building this business plan, aside from, you know, the ones that you did for the, the city and state, that's where you're, you're going to find out these parts. And then once, once you're like, okay, now I've got my five stores. Now how do I get there? Then you can start filling in the gaps on how to, how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to get more of an overall picture of what you, what you really envision. Uh, because had I really understood the uh, amount of volume you can put through one store, I would have focused my efforts. And here in Colorado, this is me personally, I would have focused my efforts on having two amazing stores because the locations, they're going to get gobbled up. But if you have some amazing stores, you don't need multiple stores everywhere. Because I don't, depending on your goal, you know, some people want to, they want to run all of Massachusetts. We're going to have a store in every city. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you want to sell out to them and they can take your store over in five years and you're like, I'm on to something else. And the part of a business plan that was the biggest thing I missed was my exit strategy. Because nobody's thinking, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to get bought out. I'm going to get bought out. They don't know how and they don't know when. So building your company as Flavia sees where her dreams and goals are at is way more important than spending $40,000 on a business plan built by somebody else that's going to give you 10 million to do all this stuff with. I, I just, I just don't think you're ready. Um, that's, that's where I come from on this. I think you're going to change your mind on how you do things several times over. But the one thing is, is getting that vision and where your goals and dreams are. Right. The, the whole point about entertaining the, this was that I want to have my cultivation, you know, to a good start. I <laughs> understand. That was my original goal to have the cultivation. And then I got myself into the retails. So now I, I want to go back to my original goal and make sure that I can supply myself, my own stores. Mm -hmm. so I don't have to depend on anybody else and who charges, you know, a high amount of money for the product, which is the top dollar right now. It's over $4,000 a pound. So I, I know. And, and just like I had mentioned is once those growers get caught up, it's not going to be that much anymore. Right. It's going to be far less. If you can take and build your store sales off the backs of all these other guys that are putting millions of dollars into these grow locations and then take those funds and either build into this facility over the next two years, start putting money into that, or at least saying, Hey, I've got $200,000 that I'm going to put into this grow. I'm going to go look for some, an angel investor, which I prefer anyway, is an angel investor that is able to um, bring something to the table, not only knowledge, business knowledge and experience, but also sees that I'm putting in a couple hundred thousand dollars and he's going to come with a million bucks. So he knows I'm serious that I want, because once you're in there, you've got some skin in the game too. Mm -hmm. You're going to find that your, your pick of different uh, investors is going to be much better. Mm -hmm. You're going to have more variety and it's going to take you longer. Yes. But patience is good. You have a lot of other things you're dealing with right now. Right. And being patient as you build this grow, ultimately, yes, you want to be able to facilitate your stores. But do you have to do it tomorrow? Well, <laughs> yes and no. Yes, because <laughs> I have that lease that I've been paying every month. And I'm pushing my project forward. 
um, and you know that way I'll be able to start making money. But maybe I don't have to go with the full project. Maybe I can start a lot smaller. Maybe that's what I should be, you know, working on. There's several there to do a grow. There's several ways where you can phase in certain sections, and really planning that out and spending your time working on a a good drawing um, with with some guys that have built several of these uh, is, is really where your value is gonna come in because you can do phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and you can slowly bring in, because here's another thing, coming to a grow, there are even more, the building, the building inspectors are, they scrutinize you even worse in a grow. So the delays on that can be really far out there. And then if you've got issues with, uh, uh, I've got to bring in more electrical because I don't have enough power. If everybody's doing that at the same time, and that's what's starting to happen, I'm sure in Massachusetts, you go on another waiting list. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, when you think, you can open up a store a lot faster than you can a grow, I'll tell you that. Because there's just, there's, there's a lot less construction and there's a lot, uh, there's a lot less for the city to worry about when it comes to safety. Okay. And that's what you're going to be dealing with. And so when it sounds, it sounds like there's my answer. I can just build, pay 40 grand for a business plan. And I look out there and, and then that's the 10 million. That's what's going to get me the 10 million. I just, my, my concern is that you're not ready for it and you don't know what's coming at you. So you could tend to make another lease decision, like kind of like what happened already. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to stack up bad decisions because right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that, that'll eliminate you. That's so, right. yeah. So did I answer your questions on, on with as long as, well, again, for the listeners out there, Flavia is going to do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> um, you know, and I hope that I can give her, enough information that she is able to make some uh, make some good decisions as she moves forward. Uh, because I want to see as many people just like you, you know, hit a home run. And it's just not realistic. There's not a there's not a ton of people that are going to be successful in this. It just it's it's a hard game to play. It, it is. It's very hard. It's, it's a lot of uh, a lot of factors that play into this that um it really everybody's really trying to get you out of the game <laughs> <laughs> exactly you're either either your competition wants to open before you uh the city locally they want your tax dollars but they really don't like cannabis anyway they'll but they'll take your tax money and you know there's a lot of landlords out there that are looking at uh, taking advantage of a lot of the small business owner. And, mm -hmm. and so with those three right there, that's enough to make yeah. your head blow up sometimes. Definitely. <laughs> so, well, Flavia, I want to, I want to thank you for being on the show with us today. Um, I know that um, you have a lot of things you're going to have to figure out here over the next couple of years. And you know, for you guys out there that are, are looking into taking on a cannabis business, this is what it looks like when you are pushing forward. You have a lot of decisions to make and you want to make sure you make the right ones. So what I want to say out there as, as we leave is patience is huge and it's so hard to wait six months or a year or two years, but opportunities will start unfolding in front of you if you, if you allow yourself the, the courtesy of like, I don't have to sprint right now. This is a marathon, guys. And so you got to train for a marathon. So as you're doing this and getting your experience in cannabis, you're going to see more of this. So Flavia, thank you so much for being on the show today. And always out there, if you guys have any questions or anything you would like me to actually ask Flavia what she's doing, uh, of course, reach out to me at plantproblem.com and I can, I can uh, answer those for you. So thanks a lot for, for being out there with us and we'll see you next time. Thank you.
You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.